April is National Minority Health Month, and we know black people face a number of health disparities across our nation. This month is a time to actually raise awareness about those disparities that continue to affect racial and ethnic minority populations. Where well, Dr. Chaik Dalvany, the director of the Center for Health Equity and Community Engagement Research at Mayo Clinic, is with us now to talk about this. Good evening, Dr. Dalvany. Welcome, welcome to BNC. I'm rhyming with your name there. <laughs> Good evening, and I'm delighted to be on this show. Well, we thank you for your time. So, Dr. Dabney, we want to get right to it. You're actually a member of the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force. Talk about some of the health issues you all have discussed plaguing the black community and what type of medical research is right now being done in the background to help close this disparity gap. Well, thank you very much. And, and yes, I'm a member of the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force, which is mandated by Congress to make evidence-based recommendations for preventive services for all Americans. I'm actually here not on behalf of the tax force, so whatever I say doesn't relate to the tax force. But I will tell you that um, we, there's a lot of research that is needed to understand uh, how best to deliver services most effectively to our minority communities. And that work, I hope, is going to begin in earnest from NIH support. And Doc, we know that this month is used actually to highlight the issues that we face and that early detection is key for many of the ailments we deal with. What signs do patients need to look out for? So um, preventive services are really important because we can use those services to prevent both illnesses and death. And there are a lot of conditions for which recommendations exist to help prevent disease and death. And so it varies from the condition. For cancer, it can be signs of, say, bleeding in the rectum or trouble breathing or coughing up, coughing up blood. Uh, for heart disease, it can be shortness of breath. But what we really want to emphasize for our listeners and viewers is that the most effective way is to prevent disease uh, from occurring in the first place. And if it does, detect it early so we can treat it most effectively. And talk about some of those things that we specifically deal with on a daily basis that black people face more so than any other race. Oh, you know, Brittany, there are a lot of them. And, and that, I think, is the unfortunate part of this because uh, we know that many of these conditions are preventable. I'll give you some examples. You know, hypertension is one. It's very common in the black community and in ways that we know could be less, but unfortunately it's more common in the black community and leads to lots of heart disease, kidney disease, and other things. That be just another example. Uh, cancer, for instance, I studied colorectal cancer for many years now, if not decades now, and we know that it's preventable and yet it's more common, mm -hmm. particularly in black men and then other racial ethnic groups. Lung cancer, another example. And so there are a number of these conditions that we know can be prevented, if not detected earlier, so they can be treated more effectively. And yet that doesn't occur on a consistent basis in the black community, something that we have to change. Definitely. And Doc, you know, just this week you talk about change. The CDC has now declared racism a serious threat to public health. Can you talk about what that means for the leading health organization to recognize it as a serious public health threat? And one thing that stuck out to me is that they call the severe disparities unacceptable. Why now? This is a very unusual time for us. Uh, we've gone through, still going through COVID pandemic, mm -hmm. which has affected our communities in a way that um, uh, it's unfortunate, but disproportionate because of the history of racism, social injustice, higher numbers of uh, chronic medical conditions and exposure to those conditions of uh, uh, COVID because of public transportation and uh, presence in service industries. It's very clear and, and studies and reports have confirmed is that racism plays an important role in the disparities that exist. You know, let me share something with our, with, our, with our viewers. Disparities mean that these are avoidable, meaning that we can do something about it and actually eliminate the disparities. And that's the reason why this month is really important to increase awareness about the differences that exist, but also how we can close the gap that exists currently in heart disease, um, cardiovascular disease, um, hypertension, for instance, cancer and other conditions we can do something about it. Racism plays a role, and we have to address this across medicine. And the key word there you said is avoidable. So also the CDC has even created a website called Racism and Health that will serve as a hub to showcase the agency's efforts in education on critical issues. How vital will this be um, in fighting the health disparity fight? You know, we need information. Um, 
you know, racism didn't start today. It's been with us since the slavery and, you know, Jim Crow year eras. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need education. We need awareness. We need to take action. Uh, we know that when we take action with intention to address these gaps and equities, we can solve them. Uh, this is not rocket science, in my view. And so having a place, a hub, to showcase both the programs at work, the evidence that we need to understand how to address it, education that is needed to make sure that there's awareness in the health professions about the issues of racism, make sure there's research in the areas and the evidence exists for us to work on these issues. But also importantly, Brittany, there's one thing that's passionate to me. You know, we are very good at designing solutions for people. What we know now is that that may not be the right way to do it. We have to be able to engage with the communities, our communities, to work with them because many times they have the right solution, we just haven't asked them. So community engagement is really important. I know this is important to many of the agencies, important to Mayo Clinic, important to CDC and other agencies. We have to change our approach to how we design and deliver healthcare. That's really fundamental to this. And lastly, Dr. Dalbany, what message does that send to our nation with the director saying she is committed to meet this challenge, even though she knows it won't be easy actually confronting racism? You know, it, it's really important for our leaders to one, lead by example, but also be willing to stand up and make a statement because we have to make those statements and then follow with action. And I think that's an important step for us to take. So making it very visible, making so sure people know the government knows, government actually acknowledges this is a problem. So it's not about me, you, or anybody else calling it racism, but our government, federal government, and saying this is a problem that we have to solve. Mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be important, and hopefully we'll catalyze other institutions and organizations to take this very seriously, begin to find solutions and places where we can address this in a very effective and sustainable way. And we know that so many people are definitely waiting on those solutions. With Dr. Dalbini, thank you so much for your time tonight and for all of your great advice. We appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Brittany.